project created by Visual Muse Media offering a free platform to the music industry where they can express the difficulties they are facing because the COVID-19. Presenting our guest of today's episode. Hi, I'm Ben Christo from the Sisters of Mercy, Diamond Black and Nathan Gray and I play guitar and sing backing vocals in all of those bands. And now let's start with the questions. How many tours or concerts have you had to cancel or postpone? We had a lot of shows and tours cancelled due to the pandemic. In fact, we were on tour at the time. And we were four shows in to a European tour. This was with the Sisters of Mercy. We are in the UK, we'd done four shows, and we started getting word that shows had been cancelled and postponed in Italy, Germany. Suddenly all of the Netherlands is off. And we were like, well, when, we get, when we get to the next point of this tour, because we were in the UK at the time, we'd done four shows in the UK, are we gonna actually have any European shows to go to? So, um, and by the time we got to the fourth show, which was Nottingham Rock City, amazing place, as you know, um, we just had to make a decision, which was, if we drive over to, to Europe now, maybe we won't get back, or we'll have to quarantine, or everything will be postponed, or we'll come back and we'll have to quarantine. And it just wasn't really doable, and it was super disappointing, I mean, I'm sure for everybody. Um, Particularly because that tour was going so well, we, 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 we were getting really good feedback, the shows were sold out and we were playing a whole bunch of new songs that, that myself and Dylan and, and Andrew had written together that we were super excited about and we were getting such great feedback from people, um, which was really nice, people saying this is the best stuff they've heard for you know, 30 years of, of material, which was really cool, so obviously disappointing, but um, we will be back and we will pick up the tour because as well as the continuing March dates, we had um, stuff booked for September, which is just gone, uh, which was going to be more shows around Europe. Um, but yeah, it's, let's just wait and see. I'm sure it'll all, it'll all come around and we'll get a chance to do it. And as I said, it was going so well, so we'll just keep that positivity and we'll bring it forward to you. How this situation is affecting you in uh, economical terms? The situation has affected my band Diamond Black in quite a significant way economically. We potentially had tour dates lined up, and um, particularly one where we were really hoping to get on that looked quite positive, that we were going to get to go on a support tour around Europe with a band that we really, really admire, which was super exciting for us. And the reason why this also would have been so great was because we were going to hoping to sell a lot of merchandise fees from the shows etc to help pay for our record to be finished because it's all recorded our album is all recorded and it sounds really good and we're super excited we just need to raise the money to pay for the production of it and the mixing of it and so we were hoping that the touring would cover those costs so instead what we've had to do and what we're going to do is we're gonna release a physical version of our last single which was called if you kill my demons and we're going to do a limited edition physical run of it and have three different tiers, each one with cooler and more exclusive stuff. Um, we've done that before and, um, and it's been really successful. So what we're going to do this time is, what we're planning to do, is a real incentive for people to get it, is we're going to have a couple of B-sides on the single that you can only get on the physical version, which are going to be songs from the upcoming album, but alternative versions of them. So like maybe an electro version or an acoustic version or a vocal only version, whatever. I haven't decided yet, but they'll, then it's like a preview of the album without actually giving anything away from the album. So people can still hear it and get excited about it. Plus, those B-sides will only be available on that physical CD and there'll be a very limited amount of that CD 
Um, so that's something cool we can do and it will take us time to do these alternative versions but it's worth it because we want to give people something special and also um, really inspire people to, to help us to raise the cash to, to finish the album. The last time we've done one of these was really good. We did a song called The Scarlet, uh, the video of which I believe is spliced in with this interview. And the way we raised the money to make the video was from doing the physical uh, campaign. And it was so cool because we had a very limited amount as usual and top tier all sold out within the first five minutes of going online. And it was just so uh, kind of life affirming, I guess, and exciting to see that the passion that our followers have had for the band that is, is so is so um, significant that people just couldn't wait to be a part of it and they couldn't wait to help and they really wanted the stuff and it's really inspiring I think um, to see that kind of instant feedback that often in the past you don't really get from being in a band unless you go and play a live show <laughs> go back to live shows again um, but yeah so we're really positive about what can happen this time and, and to everybody who helped us with the last one with the Scarlet thank you so much um, and we really appreciate what that's helped us do. The video is fantastic. We did it with Andy Michaels, who's super talented. And um, these songs that we'll be producing will be with Yanni, who's the guy who's done everything for us so far. He had the guy from Icon Crash, the Solid Sun. He's so talented, he's so brilliant. And um, we're super excited about getting this album finished. So keep a lookout because we'll be talking about it on social media fairly soon. Probably going to do it in about a month from now. Um, and uh, and as ever, it'll be a first come, first serve thing. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, but yeah, really positive about it. plans or alternatives do you have right now? I mean, um, concerts online, maybe online music classes, Skype, what is your options? In terms of plans or alternative things to be doing instead of live shows, um, what this lockdown has done in a positive way for me has given me a chance to really write music and I've written now probably like 35 songs whether that be something I've completely written myself or collaboration with someone else. And that's been for my bands that I'm in um, and also for other artists that I admire, other bands that I admire. And brilliantly, some collaborations with musicians or bands that I've actually grown up listening to, my heroes, and I'm now working with them. So that's like amazing. Um, and I actually got news yesterday that I'm doing a, a cover version with a collaboration of, of different musicians, all of which are super cool and, and, some, and some of which are actually kind of my heroes. Um, and we've got this singer committing to do the song who's like super awesome and got great uh, following and really kind of an amazing singer. I'm really excited. So there are some positive things going on with the music for me. Um, and, uh, and, and it's exciting. It's exciting that there's these opportunities opening up. And last question. Hypothetically speaking, if you could choose, would you rather wait until... Uh, everyone is vaccinated maybe in a year before you fully return to your activity or would you prefer to start in a few months if governments say that it is mm, relatively safe uh, under strict social distancing rules what is your opinion about okay, this so regarding either waiting for a vaccine or doing social distance shows it's obviously a tricky one because there's so many aspects involved. Um, but what I will say is that this is the longest I've not played a show in my entire life. I think probably since I was about 14. Um, although I did play one show, right, in the last seven months, which was a socially distanced show. And it was, um, and it was interesting. I mean, firstly, it was great to be actually playing live uh, and, and see people turn up with a sold out show. And it was just a new experience, of course it was socially distanced, so everyone was separated and it was table service and people couldn't stand up and they were getting drunk and wanting to stand up and then security comes and, you know, in a, in a way that 
it was just good that people were there and it was good that people are so passionate about music about live music that they'll still they'll still go through the rigmarole and all of that in order to actually be in, in the live sphere to be in to support the scene and of course to the promoter as well who, who, who's putting that on fantastic um, and it was really good to have a sense of purpose as well because the week leading up to it I was like diligently like revising all the songs and practicing and getting everything ready so it was important um, and it's just a weird one of course it was a bit of a buzzkill and you know of course it's never it's not the same and uh, but the, the fact was it was a positive thing um, it, in the sense of it was properly policed and we had a good time and we got to play and the response that we got afterwards was so overwhelmingly enthusiastic obviously not in person because we weren't actually allowed to meet the audience afterwards which is understandable um, but online, it was a sense of, wow, thank you so much for doing this. I feel like I've got my Saturday night back again. It's been so long. I've been so desperate for this kind of chance to, to get out and be, and be as social as we can be. And I think it's worth doing. Um, obviously, it's, it does get more complicated when, you, when you're talking about actual people's safety. And um, it's something that's very, very hard to answer without knowing every single fact, which I don't think any, anybody does at the moment. Um, but it's interesting because when I've heard people talk about fans and, and, and music fans say, would they want to go to a social distance gig? Most people have either said, yes, they would, they'd take the chances, or no, they wouldn't, but not because they feel unsafe, but because it's a bit lame to be not really at the show. I'd rather go when it's actually a show again. Um, so I guess, you know, people are, what people are hungry for is the feeling that you get from a gig when you go and that live experience.
We invite everyone that is related in the music industry to participate, exposing a real problem that just with the union and collaboration, maybe, we hope, can change. All the information about how to collaborate on this project, below. Thank you. I hope to uh, see you on the next episode and uh, that you share, please, because as you know, sharing is caring. <laughs> bye bye.